Hey there, this is Archie Wisdom. My name's Diane. Thank you for coming by. <clears throat> Finally getting around to another video. I've been very busy uh, just m moving back down to Arizona from Canada for the for the winter. Um, but today I wanted to get back into, you know, whose mind. I wanted to look into that very packed rally at Madison Square Garden. And I wanted to see how those attendees felt about it. So if you haven't been here before, I get visions of situations, I don't know, food. I tend to like dessert, so that some comes up in my mind a lot and other things. And that seems how I try to decipher those images that way. So I also do remote viewing. And so what that means is I get into a person's energy and I can see what they're seeing and feeling and kind of what their goals are. Sometimes it's a little mysterious, but sometimes I can get really great clues that way. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, go into those uh, rally goers and see if the racist, vitriol, horrible, um, you know, even the comic, horrible things. Have they, I guess that comic really was terrible to Puerto Ricans and just that's even horrible for any person on the street to say all that stuff. But to have the leader of, or the wannabe leader, the candidate for presidents, see the president of the United States to support that and not to, you know, I know his campaign said, well, wait, you know, they tried to mitigate the fallout, but he didn't say anything. He liked it. He likes to be a thug and he wants to be a thug. And he, and the people he's attracting want him to be a thug those are those kind of people and that's where he is and that's his true self honestly that is his true self now he is early uh, you know take this or leave it but i believe he's in early on stage um or early early stages of dementia and so he is you know this happens when a person gets older and they get dementia a couple of things can happen this is my experience with family members they show their true character, no more filter. And I had an uncle who was really weird and kind of creepy growing up, wasn't even married into the family, but he got uh, Alzheimer's and dementia really pretty young. He was like 60 and he turned into the nicest guy. I know that's kind of a weird thing. I enjoyed being around him after that because he wasn't weird anymore. So I don't know what happens in the brain. And I also know that it can also make people real irritable at different stages, obviously, when they don't know what's going on. But also their true character can come out. They can be childlike. But I think in Trump's case, I think it's going back to his early upbringing and that his second nature. Plus, he gets a lot of feedback and he gets a lot of um, positive attaboys, you know. So anyway, I'm going to look into the rally goers and seeing how they felt about that and if it changed any votes and maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I also wanted to look, I try not to look at other readers, but sometimes the, uh, what do you call the transcription or the captions come up and I heard this word twice on a couple different videos where it's secrets. Mike Johnson may be having some secrets behind the scenes stuff going on now. For me, I've seen him as the great and powerful Oz, the guy behind the curtain from the Wizard of Oz movie, you know, um, moving all the switches, trying to make everything look different than it really is and make it seem like he's all this, you know, powerful wizard. But in reality, he's he's kind of weak. Uh, that guy, he's hiding and, uh, in the movie. And I think that is a characteristic of Mike Johnson. I don't think we he wants us to see what he's doing for a variety of reasons. Um and so I'm going to look into that. I wanted to see if he is going to change anything when they do the certifications of the electoral delegates voting or the ballots in the Congress, like it was supposed to do on January 6th, if he's going to do anything to sabotage that. Um, you know, I see a whole variety of things with polls that, you know, she's tied with a few you know points ahead i've also seen that um you know jo joe biden was much farther ahead in 2020 with trump than she is with him 
And so I had a viewer ask about that and say how, you know, that scares her or him, I'm not sure. And so I wanted to um, uh, kind of check into that. I don't think, I still think Harris is gonna win. I think it's going to be much at a much greater, uh, you know, not quite a landslide, but much more than I think people think she will at this point. And I think it's gonna be a lot of women and young people. And, um, but there is a huge pushback, you know, fear and drama. There's that. I also am going to look at the Washington Post. They did a non-endorsement and uh, I think somebody quit because they did that. One of their um, longtime editors or journalists. So, and Jeff Bezos was the one that was the name at the top that decided not to do that. So I'm interested in that. Okay. I think that's it. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, let's start with that Washington Post non-endorsement. First, I wanted to thank all my new subscribers. Welcome, and I hope you um, enjoy. I try to bring value to your life in this channel. Um, I'm also, I have a mural coming up on top of all this other stuff I'm doing. I have a mural coming up in a week or two. So I was working on this drawing, and I'm going to just show it to you today. So this is the student council wanted, you know, they pay for had gift to the school. And this is going to be, and it's actually got a quote in it from Ferris Bueller. You know, that quote, he says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Young people still watch old movies. I love it. Ferris Bueller still is a classic. So I'm going to be working on that. And you guys will see more of that as time goes on. But I'm going to look into the Washington Post. And um, I have my um, animal cards here. Animal, animal totem. I tend to use crow lately. Crow tarot. And animal seems to be my go-to anymore. I don't know. I have a lot of earth in my chart, astrology-wise. And so I think I would really tune into animals and nature. Um, Washington Post. So... I'm going to get into the energy. Why Jeff Bezos? I'm getting into his energy and why. Okay, I see two different camps over on either side of him. They're saying, yes, let's endorse. Because they had it ready. They were going to endorse Harris. I read the article on Reuters, I think. They're, they were going to endorse her. They had it all ready. But he said no. Uh, he didn't. He wanted to be more neutral. He felt like it wasn't right. That's what the article said. But um, Jeff Bezos, and why aren't you? Yeah, okay. I want to be neutral, but I also know uh, there's something he's digging. Why is he digging? There's something moving forward. So yes, no, over on either side of him, digging a path. It doesn't feel neutral. There's a purpose. He's not a journalist, obviously. He's thinking more like a corporate owner, leader, rich man, with a lot of money. It's dark here. They're just talking back and forth, and he's digging this channel, like trying to... Um, I don't want anybody to know who I like because it'll affect me. And he feels he can't not because he's Washington Post, even though it's a newspaper, he knows it'll come back to him. And he has a lot of Republican friends, a lot. So he doesn't want to get between them so he's it's almost like he's an ostrich or he's digging his hole and he wants to hide in this little trench so he doesn't have to decide or he doesn't have to say it out loud and um do you like harris or trump actually i feel like even though the paper is endorsing harris i feel like he would be leaning towards trump i could be wrong i'm sure i've been wrong many times so, but I feel like he's 
going that way a little bit more towards Trump and he doesn't but it's not a great deal more but I think the paper wants to say Harris or they have their editors okay why and will it matter let's see that was the question I think from my viewer will it matter it does to some elite people to some people in Washington in DC or people in the politics in the politics <laughs> And the internets, uh, the ethernets. Yeah, I think he, it'll affect the top uh, wealthier people, uh, people that are involved in politics, uh, in the upper echelon, the elite. But will it change their vote? Um... I think people would have been happier if had they endorsed someone because I think there are people, older folks, that have used that endorsement on their that paper and other, um, you know, unions, firefighters, police groups, community that endorse different presidents. And I think there are people that look to that. And um, I think there are some people that are frustrated because like, all right, now I got to think about this on my own. I can't. Um, and they're a little disappointed, but I don't know if it'll make that much difference. So, and I think his buddies, who I, I perceive as his buddies, are, um, you know, they're two Republicans. And so, okay, I dropped, they dropped. The Queen of Cups dropped, and she's very emotional. So this, and also I'm seeing the moose. The moose go underwater because they're or herbivores, and they go down to the bottom of lakes. And I saw a moose this summer. Well, I saw a picture of it because I wasn't in the car. I haven't seen them yet, except far away. I did see a bald eagle. Here we go again. I did see a bald eagle fighting for food in front of our cabin. But King of Swords is very non-emotional. So this is him. There's an emotional component to this, but he is staying aloof. He's like, I got to stick with what I think is right for me, for the company. Not so much Washington Post, but Amazon mm -hmm. and all that he's doing with that. Um, and then the fool is very risk taking. Um, and he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, doesn't want to take that risk. He's not a person who has a leap of faith like that. Yeah. Remember I was saying he was digging and he's putting all in this Knight of Pentacles very slow. He's putting his money away. He's, I'm not giving that up. I feel like it's too going to affect what I'm doing. So it's a practical, pragmatic thing for him personally, which sucks because journalism um, should be journalism. Anyway. Um, so, okay. So let's go to that rally, that Madison Square Garden, which was very full, by the way. And I... The people must have came from all over, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Maine, wherever. I think they came down from a lot of places to go to his rally. Okay, so I'm going to travel in my mind's eye. I'm going to be in that uh, rally in Madison Square Garden. I've never been there, but I've seen lots of pictures. I've seen, I don't know, I feel like boxing matches and basketball games and concerts and all kinds of sort of things there. It's the energy is, I believe the energy fills the building that's been there, the historical energy, the energy from all the people that have attended different things there. It's embedded into that place. Okay, so I'm going to start with Trump. I'm going to see what he's feeling, why, what he's doing. He didn't show up for like four hours and people I'm sure were hungry and cranky, um, but they listened to all the different shows or you know warm-up shows I think Hulk Hogan was there and oh I don't know all the different people Stephen Miller like I said before he reminds me reminds me of Joseph Goebbels Goebbels the German um, one of Hitler's henchmen oh yeah somebody had asked me which I'll do later this isn't the <laughs> the uh, video for that but about past lives and why would he come back and do the same thing over again um she asked me about 
different aspects of God and, and how that would work. So I'll, I'll do that another time. So thank you for that question. But uh, yeah, Stephen Miller, heebie-jeebies. So Trump, like I said, he has his dementia starting. And I've said this before, he's not tracking. He cannot keep track of what is happening around him. He's sort of like a broken record. He's replaying not just the old hits, but there's something about his brain. He's repeating things, but now they're more outrageous and horrible and this, um, you know, everybody is a murderer and a rapist and uh, so, but what I do feel is like he's got a bubble of, of weird light around him and maybe it's his orange haze and he's tired. I feel tired in this particular rally. I feel tired. Like I want to go lay down. I mean, maybe he doesn't literally want to go lay down, but I do feel like he's tired. And he only has like, you know how when you play video games and you have the little red battery on the side or the light and it goes boop, boop, boop. I picture his is getting really, really small. Like he has very little life left or battery in him. Um, or even on your phone, I guess that's another analogy. But his is going faster. He's very happy about the people. That actually gives him a little bit more energy seeing all these people. And I can see him like grinding his teeth, not grinding, like doing a side to side motion, like he's waiting to go on. But he's, they're giving him some, giving him cocaine, snorting something. Maybe it's, uh, what do you call, smelling salts or something? Hmm. Yeah, he's up. He's trying to stay up. And um, oh, he has a small window of energy and he's, he's going to drop off um, after he gets off the stage. But it was terrible. Um, he really depends on his staff to help him right now. They are really doing a lot behind the scenes to keep him focused, steady, um, remotely coherent. I thought we had an interview with somebody this week, but I could be wrong. Um, okay. What did you think? He said, I only have so many more days and I'm just going to get through this. I can do this. I only have to, you know, I can see the finish line. I don't think that's the word he is, but he sees the end in sight. He feels very confident in a way. And in the past, I've seen him take off on his flying carpet, fly away, or him in that little baby Donnie balloon that was that float in that parade. I feel like that goes away too. Um, right around the election. At first it was right before, now it feels like it's right then. Like he gets the news and he doesn't stick around. Um, but he says, I'm gonna make it. I can see it's right there. Uh, and he really depends on all his staff. He's not, so how do you feel about all these people yelling and happy to see you? It was, well, of course they are. Of course they are. They love me. Of course. I'm awesome. I'm great. Everything is great. And I'm amazing and powerful and I'm smart. And why wouldn't they come here and see me? They know I'm the answer. They know I'm the answer. Uh, and I don't feel like I need to get it to be presidency because I'm going to go to jail. Although I know that's back here somewhere, but in this moment, I don't feel that, that energy or that thought process. I just need to keep telling them I can fix it. 
I'm the only one that can fix it. And how, yeah, he just feels like he's barely going to make it past election day. That's what I feel like. But he wants to, and he feels like he can. He feels like he's the answer, obviously. But I don't think he's, I think he's going to leave the country. Um, now, let's look. Five of Swords. Yeah, so he's there's some betrayal and stealing and thievery going on. Uh, okay, MAGA people. Now, let's go out of him. We're going to be watching. I'm going to be sort of up here. He's over there, down on the stage. Super excited. Everybody's super pumped. Um, how do you feel about... I feel like I'm a man. How do you feel about all the the comic and the Stephen Miller and all the things they say? Yes, yes, yes. I don't... Yeah, right. They're right. They're right. I'm excited to see him. He feels so excited, like he gets so lucky to actually see him. Like you'd go to a concert and see a, you know, a Led Zeppelin or that's an old reference. <laughs> Taylor Swift. How about that? Uh, uh, seeing Taylor Swift, seeing Taylor Swift live, you'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe that she could do anything. You know, it's like that. Although it's a man, so maybe he would see. <laughs> He's older, uh, and he, they just like the. The thuggery, the badassery, you know, like, um, yes, let's take control of our world and our United States because everything is going bad and because you say so it is. And I know it is because I go to the store and things are expensive, even though Joe Biden has anything to do with the price of stuff, you know, it's called um, supply and demand, but uh, he... He listens. They just listen. Okay, I'm going to move. So those words of, of uh, racist comments, do they mean anything? He's like, yeah, yeah, but people around me say that stuff too. So they don't, he doesn't think anything of it. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over here. Maybe there's a woman. She's kind of bummed a little bit. She doesn't feel, she's disappointed. I found somebody that's disappointed, actually. And only because I'm tired and I I don't understand why he's not being like... I feel like I'm seeing the women that's aid, I guess you could say. The people that he has committed crimes against. The women. So I'm picturing that in my mind's eye. So she has that in her mind's eye. And she's... And I see Melania from this woman's perspective. So she sees her there too. So there's her perspective is completely different. And she is disappointed because there's not any meat, no substance. And she was hoping there would be more substance to what he's saying and what, to what all these people are saying. And I think she wanted more... Um, you know, she wanted to be converted a little bit or convinced. Maybe she had some questions. She thought, well, I'm going to go and I believe in him. So when I go, he's going to say this stuff and, I, and I'm going to get it and I'll be relieved kind of thing. But no, she doesn't feel relieved. She feels worse. And she doesn't want to vote for Harris. But she doesn't want to vote for Trump either. Hmm. She may reluctantly vote for Trump, but she's really disappointed. So that's two perspectives of two different people. All right, I'm just going to pull three cards on a general feeling from the whole crowd. I know that's really hard because I just did two different people. But I will it have affected the outcome of the election? No. Not substantially, like one way or the other. I think people will have fallen back, but there'll be some, still some gung-ho. I don't think it'll make maybe some... Okay. Seven of Wands. Oh, the Devil. And the Queen of Pentacles. So, Seven of Wands, and this is the skunk. And he's fighting. And 
they, I see this as a stinker. <laughs> um, and these are all aimed at, at Trump. These are all people watching him and going, okay, okay, okay. And then the devil is they almost, they're out for blood in a way. They want that, because um, that's what this particular card is like, a jaguar or a lynx or something, killing his prey. But it's instinctual. Um, it's very primal, very visceral. And many of them want that feeling. They just want to go and get somebody. And so many of those are like that, and they've already. But I do feel this feels, this is Queen of Pentacles, and this is a happy pig. There's a little crown, and the Queen of Pentacles is very pragmatic and security conscious, but also very generous with her wealth. And she's very, it's luxury and all this. Um... So there could be a feeling by some people thinking that he's going to flip it around for them. You know, they don't have a lot of money and they see that he's going to help them have that money. Um, even though, you know, I'm going to take all the migrants and ship them off to some random place, you know, because they're everywhere killing and raping everybody. No, they're not. But yeah, the Hierophant... Um, they're the keys. This is the polar bear. This is the northern lights. Um, the Hierophant. I also look at this as the government. There's something that the Biden administration, I think, right now, or the Justice Department, something is going to affect how these people see him. I know there was that woman. And there's that Queen of Cups again. Very emotional. Okay. Um, I don't think it made a huge difference. I do think some people said no, they're not going to vote for him. But then I feel like most of them are going to say, yeah, I love him. He's still my guy. And they want him to beat people up, honestly. I think that's what they, they get off on that. <sighs> so let's see. Okay. Let's move on to Mr. Mike Johnson, the great and powerful Oz. Um, what are you doing? Okay, I'm going to get into his energy. And he is, I feel, actually nervous. I feel nervous. Why do I feel nervous? I'm in behind the curtain, so I'm hiding. What are you doing, Mike? Shh, he's like this. Shh. I have a lot A lot of things tucked here and there. Um, maybe that means a lot of plans that are like different possibilities. If this happens, we're going to do this. If this happens, we're going to do this. If this happens, we're going to do that. Um, are you going to not certify the count? If I have to, if I have to, we're going to squeeze all of the fraud and... Um, all the wrongdoing out of the entire election. Like I see him squeezing to find things to come out of it that he can point to. Um, what? Oh, he really wants to maintain power in the house. Really, really. Of course, that makes sense, but I feel a sense of it's very important because if he's not a le uh, leader, then, then the Republican Party, well, Obviously, if he's the leader, then they're not the majority. And he knows that they have to keep the majority. What do you want to... There's like a little yellow wall right here. A little short wall that he's... It's a barrier. But I also see it's very open here. So it's almost like, okay, I'm behind this curtain. I've got all these things. There's a short wall. It's like a half wall. And so it tells me they have a limited amount of ability to do anything. But there is some way of blocking it. But it's only limited. Um, yeah, I see Matt Gates. I see Jim Jordan. I see all these guys. 
uh, just whispering to each other. They got all these plans. There's also all these other staff members that they've got on board or other people outside of the Congress that are meeting and doing stuff to plan for court um, injunctions and court suits, lawsuits against everything. I also feel like there's some... I, Georgia just popped in my head. Don't ask me why. Georgia popped in my head. And there's some definite issues. And I looked into that before that non-elected, self-appointed election commission are are trying to change the rules. There's something happening there. They're going to like almost like do everything they can. They're not going to move unless kicking and screaming. They will not leave their job. That's their. That's what they need to do is certify the election but they also could not believe that it wouldn't go towards trump they just cannot believe so they are going to like again drain everything of any possible fraud or um, impressions or the illusion of fraud Um, will you be successful if i try to be if i am if i can be i will be We're doing everything we can. It's like he's... Okay. Will you? Okay, I'm going to ask my spirits and guides. I'm pulling back. Can he be successful? It's very messy. There's a lot. Smoke and mirrors. Moving this over here. Moving this over there. And it's not so much, it, it's individual states somewhat, but it's more about when it gets somewhere else. And I know the states have control of it. But they have all these dark plans. No. I don't see them ultimately completing their goal is to... Um, Pull, get Trump to win through illegal or corrupt or any kind of nefarious ways or means to ignore ballots and things. It's going to be very messy. Um, I don't... Okay, November 5th, maybe the... Now the 7th popped in my head. So I feel like they might not know anything till the 7th for the ballots, you know, the winner. But after that, still, there will be a lot of Dark, backhanded, dark room, sneaky, illegal. And I see the Proud Boys on the side over here going, okay, we're ready. We're ready. What do you guys want us to do? But that's as far as I want to go. I'm not going to look right now into any violence or anything. I'm just going to pull some cards on Mike Johnson. What's his... Energy, although I've already kind of looked at it. Four of Swords. Yeah, he's being, he's waiting. He's waiting. You know, this the toad, this is the poisonous toad um, in Arizona. They go into hibernation uh, most of the year, but during the monsoons when the, they go underground. And when the dirt gets wet, they come out and they lay their eggs or have their babies. and But otherwise they're in the ground, but they're very, very poisonous. So dogs eat them and they die. So they're very poisonous. So I'm wondering who's poisonous, who is sneaking around waiting to come out. And it's going to happen quickly. More Page of Swords, also an Arizona thing. Maybe Arizona's a place where they're going to do some stuff. Both of these cars are Arizona. Roadrunner, whenever I see a real roadrunner in life, things speed up really quickly, just in my experience. And then Five of Pentacles. So this is being an outsider, not having, um, feeling like you're never going to have enough to make ends meet. And I feel like these are the votes. I feel like they're going to come to the realization that it's not going to work out and they are going to be on the outside and and it'll be a sad day for them. Yeah. Yeah. But do you notice it's snowing here? So it might not be till winter time, although November is not too far away. But okay.
And then I see the Ace of Pentacles. This is the dung beetle. It's taking the dung and making something great with it and moving it around. So maybe we have some dung. Or maybe we have some yucky stuff that we've got to create something with. Start from scratch. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you for coming by. I'll be seeing you soon in between things. And uh, let's keep up the faith and stay in that positive light belief because we have power our own little selves and our mind whatever you believe to be true is true so stay in the faith fear is just an illusion okay take care till next time